Now, this snorkel was made by Radius Fabrications. Now, it wasn't my first choice of snorkel, but hey, it'll still do the job, and for the price, I cannot complain. So, originally, I wanted a, Pedro a Patrol Doctor Customs uh, snorkel and airbox, um, although wait times on that were just crazy. And, yeah, price was quite a considerable amount higher than, um, than this setup here. After having received it, uh, I definitely cannot complain about it. Um, it definitely seems like a, a pretty good um, setup and should definitely work very well within the patrol. So, in the kit, we'll receive a silicon joiner, which will go on the other side of the airbox that goes to the snorkel. Also get um, some little accessories here, like your hose clamps, um, your pinch seal, and also some riv, riv nuts, or um, whatever you like to call them. Uh, you also get instructions in here as well, and also a list of uh, some additional things that you will need to um, to be able to do this yourself. You also get a template of where you need a cart on the car as well, so that's always handy. You get your airbox, uh, which has got a nice plexiglass top on it, and you also have a filter inside there, which is quite a, a hefty filter as well. Um, let's see if we can, there we go. So that spans the whole length of the airbox, and um, the quality of welds and stuff seem to be pretty good. Notice that there's a bit of um, weld that's been sort of pushed through on the inside here, but that won't be much of a drama. It doesn't really matter. But all the welds seem to be pretty good. Um, there's no holes or anything in it, which is obviously what you want. Also has a drain down here which if you do get water in your airbox, um, you just take that nut out and uh, you'll be able to drain it that way, which is always good, because obviously the idea is to not have water in there. And you obviously have the snorkel yourself, which is a five inch uh, snorkel. Um, this has been powder coated black, obviously to, to match the car a lot nicer. Um, they have a seamless option, so you, uh, you can't see these joins here. Uh, but it is what it is it doesn't really bother me too much everything all in all looks good and for seventeen eighteen hundred dollars um certainly can't complain i know five inches big but you really don't realize how big it is until you see this thing um they look a lot smaller on the car but yeah these things are actually huge and that airbox is massive too so yeah very happy with um how how the kit has turned out now it has this sort of foam seal here as well that obviously when you tighten these up will tighten the seal so no dust water or anything can get in which is obviously the whole idea of the um the air box so pretty happy with that obviously this is the um inlet side where your snorkel will mount up to and here's obviously the side that will go into the uh, engine Obviously that's denoted by this arrow on here, and this is the spot for your MAF sensor. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, let's go and check out the other things that the kit needs um, so you can successfully install it. So it gives you a guide to fitting, which just basically says, you know, check that you've got all the things that you need. Um, sort of a bit of a, a run through of how you should install it. Um, and then a cleaning guide for you if you have a stainless, um, like just normal stainless, unpainted snorkel. And then it also goes onto this page as well and um, lists a list of things that you need. So obviously you'll need some masking tape to protect the guard when you cut it. A step drill, probably not really necessary. An air hacksaw, uh, I've got a Dremel which will be fine for this. Um, a spanner, 13mm. Pop rivet gun, um, obviously for the riv nuts. Some sicker flex to help seal um, the holes that you'll drill in the um, in the pillar. Some Loctite, Loctite to make sure everything is um, nice and tight and won't come out. And big item here, touch up paint. Um, definitely if you're cutting into something and exposing raw uh, metal, you'll need to either put some fish oil on it or just paint it um, to help protect that from rusting because you obviously do not want that to happen. 
Um, and then yeah, it goes into instructions on how to um, how to do everything. So it's not a bad guide, and it'll definitely be big help when you go to fit this up yourself. So um, yeah, not not too bad. And then obviously this is the template, um, and it looks rough to say the least. Wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but um, yeah. So here's the template, and this is what you'll um, stick to the car once you've obviously measured it all up. And obviously uh, this section here is what you'll be cutting. Um, and obviously it has these boarded parts that match up to the um, to the guard. Now that's just been traced on there and then photocopied um, for every time someone buys one of these. So, But anyway, it'll definitely be a, a good help when it comes to cutting this up. So I think our first step will be remove the factory airbox and um, chuck this one in and then yeah we'll go from there now the beauty about this kit is um, it retains all the factory mounting points as well as the factory mounting hardware so um, one of the benefits of that is you know it's gonna fit and you know that you're not gonna have to worry about um, you know buying extra things or modifying things in the engine bay to make it fit so hopefully that is the case when we fit it up that's what it says in the instructions so we'll get to pulling all this crap off and um, yeah we'll see what it's like all right so you need to undo this one this hose clamp here that obviously goes into the intake remove your MAF sensor which is now a good time to give it a clean with some specific map sensor cleaner take that one out and look like that give that a clean if you need to if it's dirty that one looks good so happy with now this is the plug for your mass sensor the car will not start without this so do not break it or ruin that because the car will crack the shits now this loom um, goes into the airbox with some plastic clips there's three of them so I found just getting a flat um, blade screwdriver and levering them out is fine um, and then you'll have to figure out a way to um, sort of route that back up with a new one nice and neat but we'll get to that when the time comes now all I can see is these two um, bolts here um, which should be easy enough to get out there's probably another one somewhere over the other side um, and I think there's also a breather that goes into that no uh, and there's another bolt down there as well, so that's okay. You've also got this breather here for perhaps diff or something um, as well. So now's a good opportunity to route that up a little bit higher. Um, probably up against the firewall somewhere would be ideal. Um, obviously not hanging onto a manifold or something hot down there because uh, we obviously don't want to burn that. So having it tucked up here somewhere will be fine all right so once we've got them done that'll be ready to come out and obviously this is where it connects into the guard here with this little snorkely thing now don't use a phillips head on these even though they do have a phillips head get a 10 mil socket and take them off properly assuming that's probably 10 mil so we'll take them out and um then yeah we should be good to remove it all right, we now removed all the bolts and this breather here as well. Now, if you get some pliers on the top of it here and just push in, um, then it'll just easily pop out of there. No worries at all. So that's pretty easy. Now, we can lift up the air box and we can take that out. And just like that, it comes out very easy. Alright, we now have a heap of access here and a heap of room to work with. So that'll be good when we go to putting our new airbox in. Now's also probably not a bad time to clean your throttle body as well if you notice it's a little bit dirty. Noticing there's a little bit of um, dust ingress into the um the hose here which isn't ideal so um yeah definitely chucking a new um airbox on here that's more designed 
to suit um, ball driving applications will be a lot better. I don't think it's gone past this seal here though, um, but still definitely, you know, something to keep in mind. So this little snorkely bit here that uh, goes into the guard, you can see it's got a clip here and then it's got another one on the other side here as well. So you just get yourself a flat blade screwdriver and um, pop them out and that'll also come out with it um, because there's obviously going to be no room for this when the um, new airbox goes in. So we'll remove that and then we'll chuck the new airbox in and then yes we're getting closer to the scary bit. Alright, as you can see by the state of my intake here um, you can see there's a lot of water in here um, now I've probably been at the limits of what you can do with not having a snorkel um, mm. but you can see just how much like stuff, dust, dirt um, and obviously water that has got in here now luckily the filter obviously sits well off the bottom of the uh, airbox um, but yeah this is definitely a good indicator that if you're going to be full driving a snorkel is definitely uh, a must now obviously I've not had any dramas with the engine and the filter's always been dry after I've come home from four wheel driving but like I said I've definitely been probably at the limits of um, yeah, what you can push this thing to with no snorkel um, I've been through some deepish water crossings probably you know tyre depth absolute max um, wading depth I would say and yeah quite evident by all the crap that is in here so yeah, definitely a good time to chuck a snorkel on. Alright, we've got it placed in now. Obviously you won't be able to tighten it up or anything just yet because um, you still need to cut that hole a bit bigger in the side there. But you can still place it in for now and chuck your MAF sensor back in. Now obviously this uses some um, Allen bolts to do this, 2.5mm. Um, so make sure you do them up nice and tight. Um, it is progressive so do this side and then do that side and then do that side and then do that side and then, that side, and then finally tighten them up nice and tight it is a nice tight fit in there too so I do like that um, that's been done very well um, so I was happy with how that um, seals so that's nice um, and make sure you do retain any of your factory stuff that you take out like bolts and that sort of thing because you never know when you may need them again um, you know, if you want to go back to factory setup or whatever for um, whatever reason so yep just um be cautious of that one don't lose anything now we'll still need to route this up somewhere but there's plenty of spaces we'll be able to cable tie this um, so it's sort of nice and neat and out of the way and also don't forget about your breather as well that'll need to be cable tied out of the way somewhere as well up nice and high preferably um, so you don't <laughs> get any water into whatever that's for front diff I think um, so yeah now it's um, sort of on to the scary bit where we need to mask up the guard we'll obviously need to take the patrol garnish off um, which is simple enough clips on the inside or you can just sort of pull it from this side and just pop it out like that um, which then gives you a nice area to cut so um, yeah what we're going to do now is mask up the guard and then we can chuck the template on make sure we're happy and then um, go chop chop I suppose all right so I've just masked up the guard and I've chucked the template on top a good way to check where your template is is just run your finger along if you can feel the ridge of where see you can see here's the the ridge here there's the line i'm gonna have to move this up a little bit so we're on top of where we need to be um pretty good through here i can feel where the indent is in the guard and yeah as you can see just need to come up a little bit more but that's not too bad um so yeah obviously mark mask up all the guard and um then yeah chuck your template on top It'll just help to um, keep, you know, bits of the car protected when you go to cut it. Um, and obviously, you know, tape it on, double check, and um, 
make sure that you're happy with where it is because you only have one shot so you don't want to ruin it so I'm just going to move this up a little tiny bit more so I can have it perfectly sitting on because I was sort of thinking hmm this doesn't look too right here it should probably be more up that way so um, yeah we'll have a double check of this move it around if we need to and um, yeah we'll go from there all right so I've just moved that and now you can see I'm right on top of where I need to be this wind is rather annoying but you can see now I'm pretty much bang on where I need to be the template is on correctly now when you go to cut this cut on the inside give yourself a couple of mil because it's a lot easier to take material off than what it is to try and put it back on um, like I said you've only got one shot at this so yeah you're gonna want to just do it in little little bites little pieces and um, yeah do on the inside of this part here because then at least you know if you need to cut a little bit more then you have that little bit more to be able to cut rather than <laughs> trying to fix it because you've cut too much off so have a step back have a look think hmm am I happy with where that is you can see further back here that yep that line definitely uh, lines up with the door and the top of it there you can tell that yep that's where it needs to be so yeah I'm pretty happy with where it's going to sit so I think the uh, the scary part is now going to commence sorry big girl but um, I'm gonna have to cut you up all right, so as you can see, I've sort of just gone around the um, template here, cutting in well below that line, which means that later on I can just um, polish that um, or like sort of grind it up a little bit so it meets that line if I do have to take any more off. Um, but now it's a good chance to sort of grab your snorkel and um, sort of just place it on there and sort of see where it's going to line up. Um, so yeah, we'll um, keep going, uh, but we are starting to just sort of get a feel for how it's going to be. Um, so yeah, this is what I mean by just taking like little bits and just sort of assessing and making sure that you're happy with how things are going um, because yeah, you know, you don't want to screw it up. So I've left myself probably a good mil or so gap um, between it all so I can can sand that up if I have to um, but so far so good so yeah just go slow and easy with it and you shouldn't have any dramas so with like everything uh, things get a bit full on and you lose track of time but anyway we've um, finally got everything out and cut so took a little bit of time make sure once you get to this stage you use your fish oil or paint the uh, the lip that you've just cut. You also need to remove the um, snorkely airbox thing that sits in there normally. Um, I had to remove mine, so just take the guard lining out and then you have access to take that out. Bit of a squeeze, but it, it will come out of there. So yeah, basically once you've um, done that, in this light you're now up to now you um, can test fit and see if um, you can get the snorkel to fit in there you might have to trim a little bit um, just depends on how close you went um, so yeah now's the time to test fit and see if we can fit it we we'll also need to take a little bit out of this here um, to be able to get the snorkel to go through there so um, I'm going to test fit mine now and see how we've done so a little bit of a recap we finally got there we finally have the guard cut out <clears throat> and we also have this section cut out as well so the snorkel can pass through after removing the plasticky bit from the inside i've now coated it all with paint and um, some fish oil as well so that'll help stop any um, rust from forming so there's a little bit of hacking and stuff you do have to do which is a bit of a shame but um, it is what it is but finally the snorkel will now fit in here so our next step is to bolt it to the pillar 
so then we can um, have it all nicely mounted up. So, yep, following the template and then just cutting um, little bits as you need to, um, doing a few adjustments and whatnot um, as you, like, try and fit it up and see where you need to cut and basically go from there. But it wasn't too bad of a process. Took a little bit of time, but um, we're finally getting there. All right, so new day, new mission. So basically, once we've got all this sorted, which we finally have now, we can move on to drilling the holes for our mounting points. Now I've got to take obviously this pillar garnish off. Um, you need to remove this little trim piece up the top of the roof here. You simply can pry that out and then it slides out and then yeah, you slide it off this side. Just be careful with that because they're easy to break. Um, and then yeah, then you've got access to your holes. Make sure your roof nuts fit and then you're good to go. Now you'll also need to cut the, um, the adhesive sticky stuff off as well. Um, just because, yeah, it's obviously stuck to the garnish and yeah, you need to pull that off. So I've got to cut that. Um, and then you can just replace this with a bit of silicon on top of that just to help it stay in place um, as well as the clips. So if you don't want to run um, your UHF wiring up this side of the car, well then probably not so much of a big deal, but um, or you know, roof rack lights or whatever down here, um, then yeah, it's just silicon it and it won't go anywhere. But um, if not, try and get some replacements of these and then you'll be um, fine. So you're gonna wanna chuck a bit of um, fish oil on these ones as well, give them a bit of a paint and um, then yeah, you can pretty much chuck it back on and rib nuts in and then we should be able to mount it then. All right, so once you've got them rib nutted in, you can then either sort out your airbox or you can sort out the snorkel first. I went with the airbox first just because I wanted to get that piece of silicon through the hole. So that's now in there. So I'm hoping I should be able to put the other hose clamp onto the snorkel, line it up, tighten it up, and it should be good. I'm hoping. Um, and then we need to sort out the bracket that'll mount on the pillar there as well and um, then we can do the final, final little touches with um, mounting everything up nice and neat and uh, swapping the logo around now little surprise I've noticed that before that I've got some new wheels on got some nice methods um, actually won these at auction um, surprisingly um, so they just come on these wheels that are on it. It's a bit of a mi mismatched pair. We've got Nittos on the front and then we've got Toyos on the rear. Um, but the tyres have still got a bit of tread left in them. So I thought, well, I'll just use them for the meantime and then, um, yeah, I'll get some new ones eventually. But yeah, they look pretty flash, I reckon. Wasn't so sure on the, um, on the chrome, but it actually looks quite good on the silver, on the, um, metallic grey. I think it looks quite good. So yeah, they turned out alright. The um, profile's a little bit too small though. It's um, only a 65, um, where obviously I want a, a 70 or a 75, but they're a 285, so they're plenty wide enough. And I've got pretty decent poke on them too, like look at that. Beautiful. That's what we're talking about. So yeah, finally get some wheels on it. And then the snorkel. And she's going to be looking mint. Obviously, you need to get some um, some center hubs, uh, some center caps, so I can hide this. But for the meantime, I'll just clean that up and give it a paint anyway. Not like it'll hurt. Um, so yeah, I get some of them, chuck them on, and that'll look even nicer. This looks pretty stupid, but um, obviously didn't come with any, so I'll have to get some from from Method Australia. But damn looks so much nicer um, still drives fine with them too the road noise is a bit um, more increased obviously because they're a more aggressive tire but um, yeah they'll be all right we'll see what they're like off-road but yeah they still got a bit of tread left in them the, the Toyos have a heap more tread left on them these are actually pretty good I actually don't mind the um, the tread pattern on these they actually look really good so we'll see how they go off-road but 
yeah, no, they look really good actually. So might um have to check these out or some uh, Maxis razors perhaps. But yeah, looking flash. And once you go through all that turmoil, you can finally have the nice big five inch bolted up. Now I'm gonna have to change them bolts out. They're just some temporary ones, but. Um, we've got them in there and she's all mounted up and geez doesn't it sound good now <laughs> you'll notice that this cut is pretty crap um, the template that you get given is shocking um, now radius know about this and they're um, working to get it sorted with like 3d imaging actual um, patrols and whatnot to get this um, template more accurate but um, it's not too bad and later on down the track I can buy a new guard and, and get it done when they have the, the new templates um, so it actually sits a lot nicer but in saying that I mean the top of it fits nice and snug same with up the side here and around the back isn't too bad pretty big gap here along the bottom isn't too bad and then um, obviously around here is a little bit too big as well but um, apart from that it's not too bad and obviously um, You'll bring your silicon joiner through and um, mount that with its with its hose clamp. I'm going to have to fix mine a little bit because it's sort of moved a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to sort of fix that a tiny bit. I need to um, do a little bit of trimming down this side to get that to, to fit a little bit nicer. But apart from that, it's not too bad. So the only real things you have to do now is... Um, find a place for this to live out of the way probably be able to um yeah cable tie that somewhere out of the way a bit nicer and um and our diff breather as well we'll have to mount that out of the way so i'll grab some cable ties and um we'll try and find a home for them all right so i'll just cable tied this one to this little hole in this bracket for the airbox mount here cable tie that there that sort of keeps it out of the way which is nice and our breather is just cable tied to the loom here for now well um eventually change out all the breathers to some longer ones so they can sit up nice and high here but um, for the meantime that'll be fine i don't plan on doing any major water crossings so that'll be okay giving the airbox a little bit of a clean so it looks pretty good now <laughs> they've done this around the wrong way the engraving on the um, plexiglass um, but anyway it is what it is uh, it's also on the underside it should really be on this side down the bottom here but anyway whatever it all doesn't really matter but um yeah basically you know your last sort of stage to fitting everything up is making sure everything in here is nice and clean and and um, making sure that you paint everything and put a little bit of um of uh fish oil in there as well to help protect everything from rust because you don't want these sort of things rusting so yeah basically now i just need to clean up the car give it a nice polish around this area and um yeah it'll be looking nice a few little bits i probably need to touch up with a little bit of paint just from where i've been test fitting it but um yeah we finally got it in there got the proper bolts in now so that's looking all nice um also be careful with this plastic as well. Pretty easy to crack that when you're putting the rib nuts in, so I've been told. So um, yeah, just watch that. And um, you probably want to tape up your mirrors as well. Not that I managed to do anything to them, which was good. Just a bit dirty, but um, yeah, tape them up when you're trying to fit it up as well, just to give it a bit more protection. But um, all in all, um, I do like the kit. It is nice. Um, the only thing that does let it down is that template, but like I said, they are working on fixing that, so, um, hopefully, you know, if this is the way you want to go, probably email them and see where they're at with that one, so you, um, can get a bit of a, an idea of how long you're going to have to wait. Now, lead times on this was great, um, it was like, oh, I don't know, maybe three, three weeks, and I had it. So they did a pretty good job there, so I was happy with that. Like I said in the beginning, like the patrol doctor one was just going to take far too long. I sort of just wanted it now, and, you know, this was a little bit cheaper. But, um, yeah, still the quality's fine. Like, the TIG work on this is quite nice. Um, the only downside, like I mentioned, was the um, 
the inside there where the weld had pushed through but I mean it's not going to really affect anything so I'm not overly disappointed um, yeah this is only the really thing that I'm disappointed with so yeah when you do yours if you do get it with the old template probably best just to go um, well below the line like I did and then try and fit it and then just cut little bits where it doesn't fit as you go along um, would be a much better way to to do it um, instead of having to faff around with big gaps and stuff like I have but still it's gonna work as an airbox which is what uh, a snorkel is you know it's what it's designed to do so all in all pretty happy could be better yes but hey if you just want something that's gonna work then you know this is for you but um, yeah just um yeah take it easy take it easy on the on the corners and you'll be fine like the rest of it's fairly tight which is good it doesn't look too bad from the top it's just yeah it's just this section unfortunately but it is what it is now the sound is great this thing sounds so awesome with a snorkel it sucks in so much air it really sounds good um planning to do a couple more videos this week uh, i've got a long weekend this week so Friday and Monday I've got off, which is great. So I'm planning to do a bit of forward driving on Friday and uh, film that for you guys so you'll be able to hear this awesome snorkel. Sounds awesome. Really happy with it. So, um, yeah, there it is, guys. Hope you have taken something away from this video and um, it can help you out for if you are fitting up an airbox. Obviously, it's the same process for everything, so, you know, it doesn't matter if you're fitting this one or another brand, then, um, you know, it's all going to be pretty much the same. So hopefully you guys have uh, been able to learn something. Just going over the final few little bits, cleaning it up, making it all look nice again, get rid of all the grinding dust, and um, yeah, give it a wash down and it'll look good as new again. So yeah, very happy with um, how it's looking on its new wheels with the snorkel. Definitely works well. Sliders, snorkel, wheels. Obviously need to get 35s instead of 33s, but um, yeah still looks looks a lot tougher so yeah very happy well guys hope you've enjoyed today's video and learnt something this is why i do it and not you so you don't uh run into these little issues like i do and you are uh, front loaded with plenty of knowledge so yeah thank me you don't have to go through this hassle but anyway it's all part of the fun so guys until next time I'll catch you at the next video.